build gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. And the problem is if you come in and build wood, hay, or stubble, especially hay or stubble, and trial or persecution comes upon that group or a little bit of adversity, that church is gone. Now that doesn't mean the members are gone, but it means the church is gone. I'm struck by, in times past, we had a pastor who came in one day and said, I'm retiring and moving. So you people find some other church to attend. I'll see you. Well, when I heard about when I heard about that in Pasadena, I was not thrilled with that because his church had just burned up. Now, not him. He's a fine man. He meant well, but that was a mistake. And the people did go out and, I guess, find other churches. But that church was gone. Not necessarily. It could have had a solid foundation, but if you build on that foundation, the foundation of Christ may stay. Those people are still going to church somewhere, but that building, that congregation, just went up, disappeared. Some congregations are built to last. A lot depends on the leadership. And this is what Paul's saying. This is indictment for any of us who might consider ourselves leaders. How are we building? And that's what Paul wants the Corinthian leaders to think of it. How are you leading that church? And what kind, what kind of, I laid the foundation, but you got to build something good on the foundation or all that will be left is the foundation and the building will be gone. So he says, verse 13, their work will be shown for what it is because when the day will bring it to light. Kind of the, the day of reckoning, the day of the Lord Jesus or the day of reckoning will come. It will be revealed with fire. Every church is going to suffer persecution and trial. How is it going to hold up? Well, it, it will be revealed. The fire will reveal what you built with. And I'll go back and reiterate. If you built with gold, it gets better. Silver, better. Precious stones, stays the same. Wood, hair, stubble, problems. <laughs> and fire will test the quality of each person's work. Now, I'll tell you, that almost can make you resign from church leadership. Go, man, I don't want to be in that category, but high accountability, high support. That's what you got to have. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. Now, it's interesting because the reward comes by gift. <laughs> but it is a reward. And it is a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. In other words, uh, you did a lousy job of church leadership. You're not going to lose your salvation over it. God still loves you. But look, what, look at the mess. It's gone. It, you know, the church fell apart. That's sad. And uh, it's not that you've, you've failed as a person or a child of God, but you didn't do what you should have done. You, you didn't build on that foundation in Christ. Somehow you got deviated from it or you went off somewhere or whatever. I got to know back in the day, uh, I was privileged to get to know the leaders of some very big mega churches and big movements. I was sitting at lunch one day, a number of us from Grace Communion with some of these big leaders, and one of them 
very, I thought, humbly said. He had a church, I think, he had about 15,000 in their main service, and he had 5,000 in some smaller satellite services that he held. And man, he was the rage, you know, he was the pastor. And he was saying how he did, and he said, I thought we were doing great. He said, and then we introduced discipleship courses to see what our members were learning and how they were doing in their Christian lives. And he said, it was a disaster. They were coming to church, but they weren't learning the Bible and it wasn't changing their lives. And he said, and I realized I'd been a failure. He said, well, you've got about 25, 30,000 followers. And he'd say, yeah, but I've been a failure and I'm gonna change. We're gonna lose some people, but we're gonna make disciples and we're gonna teach the Bible. And he said, what we've been doing is having a lot of seeker sensitive meetings, which in other words, it'd be like going to a Las Vegas stage show. And you'd go with great singers and great musicians and then skits and lights and you know, pyrotechnics, fireworks, everything. And, but did you learn about Jesus? And the crowds would come and cheer and yet the lives were not being changed and people were not learning the scriptures and he, I thought very humbly, said I'm gonna to have to rethink this whole thing and change my approach. Because he realized that he was making a huge building but it was wood, hay, and stubble. Mm -hmm. And sadly that man has since resigned from the ministry. But at least he tried. Mm -hmm. But he went and he made a mistake. We don't want to make that mistake. We've got to build on Jesus Christ. We've got to teach scriptures. We've got to teach discipleship. And we've got to call for transformation. And that's, that's the only way. To, it's not about show. It's not about glitter. It's not about how fancy you can get or how big of a hall or how many people you can pack into it. It's really about changing people's hearts and building gold, <coughs> silver, precious stones. And that applies to any who would consider themselves a leader in a church. So he continues in verse 18, the nature of the church. That's the nature of leadership, the nature of the church. <clears throat> Don't you know that and that's obviously a rhetorical introduction to something, because you should. He said, why you should know this. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? I told you he loved metaphors. He's talking about buildings. Now he's talking about the church as a building, but now he's talking about each individual as a building. You, don't you know, are God's temple? And he uses the word naos which means the sanctuary. There was a higher, which was the temple grounds. But this he means the sanctuary, the whole, what we call the holy place and the holy of holies. Don't you know you're God's temple? Now what was the greatest significance about God's temple and the holy of holies? What did the Israelites